See, that's why I wanted to become Jewish. I never finished, but I started because they tell these fabulous stories. You know, mm. they you ask, especially Russian Jews, you ask them something, and then there's this long story. Mm. I don't quite know how it maybe is applicable well, to what you. Asked, but well, I started out acting, and I looked around and I, I said, "Oh, damn it! I'll never be a great actor because." Uh, all the great actors are drunks, and I said, and I, I don't want to be a drunk. And then finally, I reached a point where I started having a lot of vodka, and uh, I, I thought I was being very witty and gay and debonair. And my wife at home said, "You weren't that funny." <laughs> <laughs> So I, 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 I decided not to become a drunk. <laughs> this is interesting because they always say in your body, they go, he was, you know, have eight Emmys. He's the only actor that's won Emmys in comedy and in drama. And I think, I want to know what you think. I think comedy and drama, everyone's oh, you know, wow, you know, but I'm thinking, you know, comedy and drama, it's just the, it's the same coin, right? It's just oh, one absolutely. the other. Absolutely. I mean, you know, I never, you're, it's a very good point you're making. Oh, good. It's a very I good point. It took me 45 and, minutes, but I think Ed and, likes and me. And any <laughs> dramatic role, if you don't look for the comedy that you can put into it, which makes the drama even more stinging and biting, then, then you're stupid. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's what you found in your parts. I bet they weren't written that way. Oh, they were beautifully written. They were, but they were beautiful. But you written. found, I think you found the way you played it. You found those things that really weren't in. I mean, you because if, if you just said, "Oh, gee, I'm going to make him gruff, and yet he's lovable and misunderstood," it it wouldn't have worked. You know. When, when I wa- when I watch him work, we do a lot of things together. We do a lot of these podcasts. Oh, you do? You've been oh, cheating on me? Oh, okay. Oh, oh. I, thought I, I, thought, I thought I was your first. Okay. He All right. Makes you feel that way, though. <laughs> yeah, he does. The thing, the thing that fascinates me really most about him, watching him in contrast with other actors, yeah. is the way he delivers. And usually on the ride home, I, I mean, I, I, I study this guy like, like no one ever. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I try to find what it is that that is different that he does work wise that that sets him apart mm-hmm. and all he gives me is the same answer what well i read the script yeah and just a few weeks ago he has a book coming out yeah i was going to mention that what's it called the, yeah the grouchy historian it's and called we the doing, grouchy historian yeah, we october doing, 15th we were doing the, the audio book for that he was doing the audio book for it oh that'd be good and while he's reading it, we spent a week in, in the studio. I really got an understanding, because he, he, can't, he can't define what he is. Right. It's, it's impossible. I know. I haven't asked him that, you as know? you well know. Yeah. Because he, he can't. He, you know, he can't. I don't ask you what your favorite show is, what you did, 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 did. And in watching him over that week, and then listening to him for the years before, you absorbed the it. same answer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course I absorbed it. Mm-hmm. But what was it that I absorbed? You know, it. What is it? It is him. And what mm-hmm. what is him? And the, 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 the thing I took away from watching him this last time and hearing his answers echo, I read the script. And in watching comparison with other actors that he works with, they're giving a performance, mm. he somehow is giving himself, which is a very different animal mm-hmm. than the performance. Mm-hmm. And I'm like mesmerized by him. So, you know, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's pounding his head against yeah. the wall. Yeah, Nick, that's, he, that's like enough radio time. No, I'm yeah. only kidding. <laughs> no, 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 I'm only no, kidding you. I guy, love hearing this. This guy's a master, you know. But he listens. Yeah. So that's what he's doing. No, he's listening. He's so listening. if somebody does something different, what, you know, he's going to respond. Right, but but what, that's hard to do. But what you were asking is, is, is how, uh, I forget exactly how you phrased it, but, Me too. But, but, but the difference is in his understanding of, to put it in a musical sense, the note. And it's really fascinating to, to, to watch him. So anyhow, Well, because he doesn't do it 
I, I'm clear we're talking as if you're dead, you're not even here. <laughs> but I mean, you know, you, you can't have an end result. And a lot when you talk about performance, people have an end result. When I was reading up on this, I loved a few things. When you talked about the Mary Tyler Moore show, you said that uh, you and Ted and Gavin would go out afterwards and you'd have a few belts and you'd have a few dinners, and, begin, and that was genuine. You say when you get the number one on the call, you didn't say the call sheet, but we say the number one, the call sheet. Um, Mary was a fabulous n- number one because, and you, and you said, when you get around a person like that, when you get a person like that, you want to own them. You want to own every pore of them and please them. I have never heard that before. And I, and I thought, that's exactly what you do. Because if I get around someone that I feel that way, I get tongue-tied. I know you probably think I don't because I don't shut up here, but you know, I get like, I get, I get stuck. You know, like when I meet somebody and they ask me, I go hi. I can't think of anything else. I get gobsmacked. But that's wonderful that you saw that and you, you sought to please that, and that mm-hmm. makes you. You didn't compete with it. Um, I, I'm going inter- to, I'm going to interview Gavin. Um, he's agreed Gavin? to do it. Yeah, because his, uh, his daughter, his no, excuse me. His granddaughter is the assistant co- a customer on this show. Oh, yeah. Because I was on the set doing something, and, and I mentioned Love Boats. They go, oh, you're really good at that. I go, well, I've been enough Love Boats. And they go, and she goes, hey, did you say that you did a, a Love Boat? She goes, well, my, you know, grandfather is Gavin McClough. And um, so, uh, and Ted Knight, I mean, I'll just tell my little story. When I did a Love Boat, he was the head of the Swedish Pacific Principle princess you know and I was the uh, mud wrestling activities person you know Mm -hmm. anyway uh, Swedish person anyway and he I don't I I don't think I've ever done this before but he you know he and he got me and I I started to crack up and once he knew that I was easy, and I was going to crack up. He didn't stop doing it. That's all he did. So what I laugh uh, eventually, the first they're nice about it, like okay, ha ha ha. Okay, the third time it's like okay, we, we got we got to get this right. And so I would like shift my eye, and I wouldn't look at him. You know what I mean? I would look like because I just couldn't look at him. And then he would like move his head. So then he goes, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because that was his joy. You know, he just loved it. And I was thinking, because he was the mayor of um, Pacific Palisades, right? Yeah. And here you are, the socialist, and here's these, like, really conservative. Mm-hmm. And then Gavin, I mean, I love that you had that. You want to talk about that at all? I mean, is there anything to... We, we never... Uh, we, we generally agreed on the, on the major topics of... Uh, yeah. We, we really didn't get deep. But why, did, why do you think you bonded so? I mean, what was your, you know, your male camaraderie Well, besides? first of all, we were three guys. Yeah. And uh, in the beginning of the show, the first few years, the girls were dominant, uh, Valerie especially, mm-hmm. and uh, Phyllis secondarily, mm-hmm. and of course Mary behind it all. So uh, all, all the time was taken up by the women. So we guys, as I suppose insurance, uh, banded together emotionally mm-hmm. and always felt pissed off because uh, we weren't getting as much time from the director Uh or the scene, there weren't as many scenes for us as there were for the girls so that made us a tight unit Mm. eunuch now were they were they all directed by by, uh, James Brooks did you have the same director? no, 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 Jay Sandrich Jay Sandrich and Jay Sandrich, I read a quote on him when he said if you can't Feel it, you can't play it. Well, that's... It's in your... Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, that's yeah. nice, yeah. So you worked with... And, and you're good friends with... The, best, Ed, the uh, best example about direction. Mm-hmm. I did a movie called Daniel with Sidney Lumet. Mm. And I played the lawyer. What's that say? Ten minutes. Oh. Is that all? <laughs> he said, you're boring me. <laughs> speed it up, speed oh, it up. Get yeah. the cues oh, faster no. together. It gets better now. <laughs> um, we got ten minutes. Oh my God! What did we cover? Okay. The best example I can give you there. <laughs> the best example I can give you there, and there was a, a, a dialogue whereby I chew out the grandmother for not doing a better job with the the kids of the of the accused couple, and um, and when I did it, uh, I did it you know st- starkly and severely, lots of punctuation. 
and um, and I did it well. And Sydney, it's the only good direction I got from him. Uh, came up and he said, "Okay, we got it that way now. Now let's let's try it with." Shut up! <laughs> You're interfering with my delivery. We have it that way. Now, now let's try it with, without all of the punch and and and, and stick it to him, and almost whispering intensively in her ear. And I did it that way. Uh, as it's like an afterthought, and I did it that way, and that's what was printed, and that was the right way to go. Took out all the storm and drum. All the storm and storm and drum. I mean, would you the naked city? I mean, voice to the bottom of the sea. Mm. Alfred Hitchcock. Mm -hmm. I, the, uh, the name of the game. I mean, so many of these shows that uh, Wild Wild West. I wanted to lose my virginity. Yeah. You know, when I was like not to the Wild Wild West. Um, oh, we can't go that far back. I, <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a big me <laughs> memory. But you know what? I was thinking. You never, you didn't do a Columbo. No, never asked. <laughs> what do you want from me? <laughs> I know. See, I'm Irish. I'm never happy. You did like you know 127 mm. TV credits, and I'm like, but why did you do Columbo? Mm. <laughs> that was my favorite, and Peter Falk was my showbiz godfather. I mean, you know what I mean. So, anyway, it's just it, it's. Do, I have another question. It's going to be a. Oh, oh, oh! But we only have a limited time. Did you, when you were, what was it like when you were, not what was it like, I hate how he phrased that, I'm sorry, but when you were in the compass with Mike Nichols and Elaine May I and Shelley Perman. Oh, okay. I was in the legitimate group that Paul had, Paul Sills had. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh. While, uh, be, before compass. Oh, yes. And then uh, he and David Shepard, his co-producer, began developing compass in the last stages of our theater, which was called the Playwrights Theater Club. Right. The city was closing us down, and they were busy opening the compass on the south side in, in uh, Jimmy's Tavern. Uh, and that's where Mike and Elaine came to power, and Barbara Harris, Shelley Berman, Anish Dugadach, now dead, and uh, a few others, mm -hmm. Severin Darden. And... Um, I didn't do anything there because I wanted oh. to stay legit and not improv. Oh. And I wanted to take my great reviews from the two years we had our theater and run to New York and flash them in people's faces. A, I just have to take off what you were talking about. So what do you feel about improv now? Were you, did you ever do oh, improv? I think it's great. I did, oh, yeah, it we, is, isn't we it? We did it in rehearsal. And, and when... Uh, uh, um, um, I'm sorry, I can't help What you. succeeded Compass? Uh, Second City. Second City. Uh, when Second City had its 25th anniversary, uh -huh. which was in Chicago, they had a big party, and they invited me mm -hmm. to be part of the group. Mm -hmm. And I did, and we did the football scene together, and I had fun. Um, but did you ever study improv, or did you, just something that you just we picked just up? We just used it, because Paul's mother, Viola Spolin, had written books. On, the whole on improv, yeah. yeah, because people are on, on the assumption, even yeah. actors, like improv yeah. is just, oh, I'm, we're going to improv. No, improv is a very studied thing. Uh, Dave, who were we asking? Remember last two week, who's the guy that did the uh, the Big Short, or that uh, director? Oh yeah. Oh, anyway, uh, sorry, never mind. He's, I mean, there are directors Alan now. McKay. Paul, somebody. Alan McKay. Huh? Alan, yeah, Adam, Adam McKay. He doesn't even want to see actors. Oh, that's that's. Uh, Adam McKay. That Adam Adam McKay is doing a is is uh, yeah. uh, quiet. Uh, Joyce Piven's uh, daughter's husband. Yes, uh, she is. Yes, yes exactly. Yes. Oh, do you and know? And Joyce that? Piven is the one who ran a lot of Second City, and oh. along with Bernie Piven in Chicago. What a isn't that fabulous? Ah, yeah. yeah, yeah, but because well, there's because there's UCB out here, which is Amy Poehler, and uh, you know, but then then they have an offshoot of it, which is uh, that Adam McKay, and I can't think of what it's called on Little Santa Monica Blue. Anyway, if I had to do it over again, I mean, I'm I'm studying improv, but I would have studied it way from the very very beginning. Mm. But this is what you say 
you say, I loved it when I was reading that you in New York, you couldn't wait to, you were thrilled to go out to the naked, to, to,